Hello everybody, uh, it's Susie Dingle here again. I'm the conductor of the Keith Ness Orchestra um, and this is my week two of the SCO Pictures at an Exhibition Project uh, video. Um, I hope you all had fun last week working on Promenade 1 and the Gnome and this week we're working on Promenade 2 and the Old Castle. I think um, there aren't very many brass involved in Promenade 2, there'll be a French horn but not very, not very many others so uh, you get a, a tacit movement there but I think uh, everybody's got something to do in the old castle if I remember rightly. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope you find the extra videos that we've made useful alongside the SEO quintet videos. Um, you should be able to access, access these as many times as you like so you can keep practicing whenever is convenient for you keep working on it. So um, I want to say a huge welcome to everybody who's joined in. Um, uh, I know that lots of there are lots of people up here in Caithness from the Caithness Orchestra that are joining in. We're planning a special event in April where we're all going to get together along with uh, members of the Caithness Junior Orchestra um, which is for children aged eight and above. So uh, we hope they're going to join in on lots of the easier parts but the adult orchestra, the Caithness Orchestra, was you know the sort of prime uh, reason that we decided to make these arrangements in the first place so we're looking forward to actually getting together with all of them in April but we were really excited to hear overnight of two other orchestras that are joining in as whole orchestras at uh, the Dundee Symphony Orchestra uh, in um, Dundee obviously they're joining in um, and they're planning a special event as well later in uh, 2021 at some point um, and the Hadley Orchestra, which is in Suffolk. And I looked up Hadley on the map and it's somewhere sort of between uh, Bury St Edmunds and Ipswich, I think. Maybe somebody from the Hadley Orchestra would like to say hello at some point on one of our Facebook posts and it would be really nice to, to make contact with you. Um, we know that the St Andrews and Fife Community Orchestra are, are also uh, joining in. Um, they were another of the, our reasons for, for doing this because we already have links with them. So. Um, that's four orchestras so far that we know about that are joining in and it would be fantastic to hear of more anywhere around the UK or indeed the world who are going to join in with us, this and so we can have some real sense of community amongst all amateur musicians uh, certainly in the UK and the more the merrier around the world joining in is amazing. So do get in touch um, please, it would be wonderful to hear from you. See, post some videos of, you, of uh, your members practicing along with the SEO videos, that would be fantastic as well. I think some of the Caithness Orchestra members have already done that on the Caithness Orchestra page and we'll try and share some videos on the Scottish Chamber Orchestra Facebook page as well. So that's really, really exciting. If anybody from the orchestras that are joining in that are further afield um, would like access to the Sibelius scores, we're very happy to share those with you so that you can adapt them to your needs depending on your actual membership, you know, the makeup of your own orchestra. Um, we're happy to give you the Sibelius score so you can make those adjustments. Um, so you can make a score for yourself that actually just has the instruments you have in your orchestra because the whole score showing all the parts is kind of unmanageable actually because there are so many extra parts in there. So get in touch again. You can either do that through the Scottish Chamber Orchestra, through um, a graduate trainee at seo.org.uk or connect or connect at seo.org.uk or you can do it uh, directly to me uh, through the Caithness Orchestra Facebook page okay and I'd be delighted to hear from anybody that's joining in so last week when I was talking about pictures at an exhibition I mentioned Ravel um, kind of in passing um, Musogski wrote pictures at an exhibition as a piano piece and it was a really personal response to an exhibition he'd been to of paintings by his very close friend Victor Hartman who died um, uh, I think a year or two before uh, this exhibition. Um, Musogski had been uh, very close to him and was really uh, quite uh, affected by Hartman's death and so he wrote his piano suite pictures at an exhibition uh, as a very personal response to, to the paintings that he saw and his friendship with Hartman. Um, and I don't think he ever intended it to be orchestrated. It was never published in his lifetime. Um, I'm not sure why that is, whether he chose not to have it published or whether it just never got picked up by a publisher. That's kind of not important, but it was, uh, it was certainly never um, published and it was never orchestrated in his lifetime. 
the first time it was orchestrated uh, was by uh, another Russian composer called Tushmalov, who was a, a pupil of Rimsky-Korsakov, who was one of uh, Mussorgsky's great friends. Uh, Mussorgsky and Rimsky-Korsakov worked together a lot, and Rimsky-Korsakov did a lot of work on some of Mussorgsky's unfinished works, um, or uh, helped him with, with orchestration and completing things. Um, as I mentioned last week, Mussorgsky was, was an amateur composer and, he, and uh, he, he relied on the other members of his group to help him with some things. And they all worked together, to be fair. Um, and some of uh, Mussorgsky's most famous pieces, like Night on a Bear Mountain, what we know as Night on a Bear Mountain is quite different from what he actually wrote because it was, it was uh, adjusted, shall we say, by Rimsky korsakov after the event. So Tushmalov wrote his orchestration of a few movements of pictures at an exhibition about five years after Mussorgsky died. So that would have been in about 1886, Tushmalov's suite came out. And when we get to Promenade 5, we are doing the Tushmalov orchestration um, because Ravel never orchestrated it. In 1922, Ravel uh, produced his orchestration of all of pictures at an exhibition with the exception of Promenade number no. five, which he chose not to include for some reason. Um, and uh, so that's now become the standard version of pictures at an exhibition that we all know as, as, a, as an orchestra favourite. Um, and Ravel was a bit of a genius when it came to orchestration. Um, when you listen to his orchestration, you can really hear lots of colours, different colours and really exciting sounds. And this week in the Old Castle, he uh, really showed his genius by choosing the saxophone as the solo instrument. The Old Castle, uh, we don't have a picture, but uh, Stasov, the critic that I mentioned last week, who was a friend of Mussorgsky's, wrote that it was a, a picture of an Old Castle from the Middle Ages with a troubadour standing uh, beneath it singing. So I've got a picture of an Old Castle here. This is Thurzo Castle. Um, and this was painted by Fiona, who's the leader of the Caithness Orchestra, who's been playing on our, our, our videos. Um, and uh, I think it's, re it's really cool, isn't it? It's fantastic colours and so on. And we all have our own images for what an old castle might look like. Um, Ravel, when he was orchestrating it, clearly had a really specific idea of the sound that the troubadour might be making and so he chose the saxophone for that which was quite an adventurous thing to do. The saxophone was invented in the middle of the 19th century um, and was originally intended as, a, as an instrument mainly for military bands and so on and only a few composers had taken it up uh, in the symphony orchestra. If you're a sax specialist and are interested in finding out about that, you could do a little bit of research, see if you can find out. There are a couple of French composers in particular who used it in the late 19th century, quite famously. There are some famous orchestral solos from the late 19th century. And then Ravel in 1922, after this piece, uh, The Old Castle, it really took off and you see a huge increase in the number of uh, orchestral saxophone solos. So it was quite an important moment. Um, so, that's a little something for any sax players who might be interested in doing some research. Um, I think it would be really nice, uh, again, because we've got a missing picture, if we got some responses to the sound of the piece um, as pictures, maybe, or maybe even as stories. Quite often when I'm preparing a piece as a conductor, I like to have a story behind something. Um, that helps me uh, with an idea of the shape of the music. So uh, I think this week your challenge is to, is to make some kind of a response uh, uh, to the music of the old castle. It can be a picture, it could be a poem, it could be a scenario of some kind. Um, and that's what I'd like you to think about so that when you're playing it and you're listening to the saxophone solo, you've got some kind of an image in your heads. Okay, so I hope you have fun thinking about that this week. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Okay, bye.